welcome to the Understanding Projects podcast. My discussion today is with Harrison Chen. Harrison has extensive project management experience, including roles such as project control officer, project leader, project manager, and manager project management office. This leads to the topic of our discussion, the career path for project managers. We talk about how to start a career in project management, the traits of successful project managers, how to differentiate yourself, defining success, and the need for certifications. Here is my discussion with Harrison Chen. So one of the um, one of the challenges for anyone uh, who is starting off in project management is is that if you look at most project management, uh, um, you know. Um, job descriptions and so on. They all say five years of experience. You know, you need to have done X, Y, and Z, five years, five to seven years of experience and so on and so on. And it gets in the, the, the obvious question for somebody new in project management, maybe they've just completed a, a grad cert course or, or program is how do I break into this field? I want to do it, but it's, I don't have five years of experience. So, so now what? So what do you, what, what do you, say to somebody when they if they ask you that right that's uh i i will say that's uh definitely a challenge for people who want to get into the profession because um you definitely need to have certain level of uh, experience um not just from the the book knowledge but also overall like experience of working with people and and uh, understand like the team dynamic how to motivate people how to deal with conflicts there is a lot of uh, um, soft core, like so, so, soft skills that you need to have, right? And and uh, so that's why um, my experience, I, I think it, it's not easy to be right out, out of the school and go into that profession right away. I guess you can, for some of the larger organization, I will use my example. So um, I, I um, when I graduated from um, the school, I went to an organization um, and uh, it's uh, in the financial services um, industry. It has, uh, so it's, it, it's very aligned to how the banks are having in terms of the, uh, the different roles and responsibilities. And uh, I started as a QA person because of my education background was more about you know, computer science and systems. Um, so what, um, by the way, one good thing about co-op is, um, I thought that I was going to be a full-time developer. That was uh, how I went into uh, the school, but because of the co-op, uh, in my second year, I realized that I cannot do that, uh, forever. And, um, by talking to people who are actually, um, been developer for like 20, 30 years, and, and I got to see their day-to-day -day life, the challenges that they face. And um, I know quickly that is not what I want to, to go. It's just not uh, for me. So uh, I was able to switch my program during the school and, and uh, focus on something that I find that would be a better uh, fit for me. So I definitely encourage uh, students who can, you know, as much as you can try to get into co-op program or even um, in your summer term, try to find um, work that is, that will get you explore more about the different type of business. That's definitely a bonus. Um, so now stepping back, because of that, uh, I, I knew that I want to get into somewhere between technology and business, right? However, because of my education background, I was all about systems and, and the, you know, development. So it was easier for me to get into um, like either a developer or a quality assurance um, job right after the school. And I started doing that. And uh, uh, after a year, I reached out to um, the HR in the organization. I, I, I expressed my interest of uh, uh, step in somewhere that has more of a business analysis type of work, right? I didn't know about project management too much at that time. So I thought, okay, you know, BA probably is somewhere that will fit me well. And uh, it's just uh, uh, by coincidence that they didn't have that available for a junior position. And they have something called project control officer uh, for junior position. And they asked me whether I want to give it a try. And I said, okay, sure, why not? <laughs> And uh, that, that's how I kind of stumbled into project management. Um, yeah, so for 
uh, typically large organization, they will have a very clear, um, you know, like ladders for you to climb in the specific um, domain. And uh, um, the names might be different, but the ones I, I, was, I, I was used to was uh, starting as a project control officer. Basically, you are helping senior project manager to do uh, meeting minutes. You uh, schedule meetings, you uh, do uh, tracking of information, you help prepare presentation, just a lot of, think about like a lot of administration type of work, right? Um, and then after that, uh, you grow into like a project leader, which is you manage um, potentially like a small portion of the project, not the entire thing. Like you might still be assigned to work with someone senior, but you are helping out with a small piece of the entire project. And then after that, you become like a junior project manager, managing small project, mostly internal, uh, less risky, and then you kind of grow that way. Um, yeah, so I my I guess my, my experience and my suggestion is that if possible, try to get into a more established and large organization that has the resources to train you to get you up to that level and, and having that progression. Um, the other, way, the other way is you can you can focus on your core skill set and eventually hoping that you can do that lateral move, right? Like let's say that, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, a number of things that you, you've said there is that, you know, how do you get into an organization? Uh, you know, it's you, you need to, to get your foot in the door somehow. Yeah. Like you mentioned co-op. You know, if your program or if your school has co-op, if not, maybe a summer job or maybe your entry level job after graduation. But somehow you get in. You mentioned you were QA. There's, you know, other types of administrative roles. The, you know, joining as a senior project manager right out of school is, is highly unlikely, you know, almost almost impossible. But if you can get in the door, then, you know. Or, or as a, a junior like project, you know, administrative right. helper, or coordinator and so on. So that's another yeah. angle, but if somehow you get in and the other thing I want to pick up on is, is, you know, you, you, you mentioned, um, you know, you, you kind of fell into it. You thought it was going to be business analysts. They kind of move, you kind of bumped into project management and I, that is so common of, you know, is, a lot of times you're not quite sure what it is exactly, but if you try enough things, if you are open, you know, as a, as an, as a new employee or as a, you know, as a, as a growing employee, if you're open to opportunities, you'll find out what you like and what you're good at, you know, and, yeah. and that's, that's very important. Yeah. And I, I will say, um, to be honest with you, once I switch over, I regret right away because as, as, as a QA, you have a very clear um, job description. Like you know that, okay, here are the requirements of the systems. You build your test cases against that requirements. You do your test execution. You write down whether it's pass or fail. Everything is logically black and white, right? And uh, uh, for me uh, as a math um, you know, um, student, focusing in that logical you know, black and white mentality, quickly switch over to, um, to a, a type of profession that is very fluid, that changes daily, right? And, and uh, it's mostly about communication, about relationship building, about how to deal with situation that you cannot anticipate. Sometimes you, you try as much as you want to plan ahead. There are just so many things that you feel like you are out of control. And, and, and uh, it was such a shock for me right away. And uh, I, I remember I was also married at that time and uh, I keep complaining to my wife, right? And, uh, uh, but at the end, I, I told myself, I said, I, I need to give it a try and, and go um, get it through at least for half a year, right? And, and uh, if, I, if I give my best shot after half a year, I still cannot uh, get myself um, you know, accommodated to this type of work, then I, at least I, I know that I, I, I try. But, um, very often when you face change, it's easy to say, I don't like it and I'm going to retreat back wh where I was comfortable uh, before. And I'm glad that I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so, so you did regret it initially. Is that what yes, I, 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 
And and uh, but now thinking back, I think uh, forcing myself to to uh, stick with it for half a year, I think that was the 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 best move because I I cannot tell you like I have so many nights I was thinking myself, can I just tell HR that you know I want to go back to be a QA? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's let's see. So uh, so now so obviously you don't you don't regret it now. Like you're okay no, with I, it. I, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, and I, and I've said that to, to, to students about the profession, that if you, if you, um, want a, 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 a job or a profession where every day is a little different, where there's decisions to be made, where it's not always clear what the right answer is, you know, if you, if you kind of, that kind of excites you or, or you think that's interesting, then, then keep going on this path. But if that doesn't, if you want things that are, you know, absolutely crystal clear, black and white, then it is not the place so, you know, find another role that is, yeah. that is like you say, um, yeah. that is more, that, that is more definable, you know, um, yeah. so, so that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I will also say that it's interesting how, um, people change uh, through the work you do because uh, I have to say by nature I'm a very shy person um, I, I tend to be very black and white like very you know clear about everything um, but because of the work I do I slowly recognize that there's a be, being flexible being able to to um, to face all kind of uh, surprises and be okay with that um, you know, that I think because of that, the work is forcing me to change the way I behave. I will also yeah. say that it, is, it brings the positive uh, aspect to my personal life. Um, yeah, so so I, it, it's hard to say. I, I think overall, obviously, you, you don't want to be way off from the work, like the profession, but you don't even need to be 100% matched to, uh, like, you don't need to say, okay, being a good project manager, you need to have one to 10 traits and I need to have all 10 traits. Otherwise, I'm not going to be successful. I think, you know, if you are not way off and you still have that desire and passion, I, I said, give it a try. Yeah, well, that, that's interesting. I, I agree. There's probably, we could probably name 10 traits here of say, these is the checklist. Okay. What, what do you think are the most important ones? Like if you had to choose two or three of, of, you know, that you, you, if you have this, consider project management, what would you, what, what would you say? And, uh, you know, th this is a very uh, funny question because I, I will say if you asked me earlier in my career, my answer would be totally different. I, I, you know, maybe 10 years back, I will say being a very good planner, um, be very good actively planning for all kinds of uh, project risk and, and having, like mitigation, all that, like that's what I thought was the, the best project manager. But now I think 10 years after, I realized that doesn't matter how much you plan, the reality will always not going to be exactly the same as you plan. So I think uh, having a very um, good um, way of dealing with stress, because I, I think as a indirectly as a project manager, you are also a leader to your team. Um, you don't want to get emotional easily you don't want to um, exhibit your stress level when issues come up because indirectly you are impacting your team and, and you don't want to share that negative energy among the team you actually want to be the cheerleader you want to bring people down like up when they are down right so having that calmness having that ability to absorb the situation and and kind of say okay you know let's figure out how we can deal with this and and don't panic right away i think that's very important the other part is um have ability to to uh, accept that you know changes are normal right it's okay to have changes and i think that the key is that um you know why it happened obviously you need to reflect what happened but also figure out what do I do from now on to get things moving forward uh, and not getting into the trap of uh, feeling bad and, and, and keep thinking about, you know, why we get into these because that can wear you down as a profession. And, and uh, um, yeah, that, that I think that those are the two main key yeah. things. Yeah. 
and and I keep talking about communication and relationship because um, at the end of the day, um, people are working together. You, you, I, I keep telling my team right now. I said um, there are people out there who have needs to be fulfilled. That's why we the the business or the organization exists to fulfill the needs of people. And in order to deliver the needs, the solution, you also need people working together. It's not like a you know, back in school, I, I remember I, I had some classmates who are like super smart and often they would be doing like the computer science project by themselves because they, they can pull it off like, you know, individually and within a couple of days. Meanwhile, me and other people who are just normal guys, we actually have to collaborate together and we spend like a couple of weeks and at the end, we, our result probably is not as good as that person who just did in two days. However, I think in, in the real world, most of things you have to work in a group setting right. and uh, you need to be able to, to understand the different culture, personality and uh, how to you know, give and take. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think all that is um, you know, fundamentally, even if you're not a project manager, I think any profession, you, you need to have that kind of uh, awareness and, and uh, uh, ability. <laughs> Right. So that that's leads me into sort of my next question, as you mentioned about school and projects and so on. Um, and so if I'm listening to this, I could say, well, I mean, Harrison, I agree that co-op would be really good, but I don't, we don't have co-op or, or I don't, my summer jobs were, you know, not in, in the role and so on. You know, can I, can I look like, can I use this stuff in school? Like, can, you know, we, we, we do projects, but you know, how do I, how do I apply this within a, within a school context or can I, or is it just, I got to wait until I get out into the real world. Right. Um, so before I get into uh, um, post-secondary education, um, I did a lot of different summer jobs, including uh, working for licks. Um, I don't know if you know that it's a, a, a burger joint. And uh, I, uh, so I, I think um, obviously the, the, if you can get um, specific um, professional experience as early as possible, that would be great. But even if you don't have that, I will say uh, it can be volunteer work. It can be any paid job that you get to work with people. I think um, indirectly, you are going to realize that years after you are building those skills uh, naturally, and that's when you are when you face different situation and and you start accumulating experience and you get to uh, shape the way you are as an individual, right? Because we're all different and unique. And I, I would say you need to know what's your brand, what's your what's special about you, because uh, I I keep the, uh talking to myself that there are so many people who have PMP certification out there. Um, there's a, a lot of great project managers. What make you special? What make you stand up, right? It could be your experience. It could be something unique about you. It could be your personality. Like, I, I don't know, but you need to have something unique about yourself because otherwise um, you're just going to be one of many and, and people are, and that in the competitive uh, world today, it will make it very difficult for you to uh, either get a job or to advance in your career. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, I, I remember, I guess I'm old enough to remember when the PMP was really like a rare certification. It was, it was around, in or around the Y2K, you know, turn around your 2000 or slightly before the PMPs were like, ooh, you know, somebody's a PMP, wow. Uh, now, you know, and, and if you go on to the PMI website, they'll tell you all about how great the growth has been of PMPs. But having said that, to your point, there are a lot of PMPs. What makes you different? What value are you going to bring to the organization other than the fact that you were able to complete this exam and right. score 75 percent or whatever the passing grade is? Um, and so, yeah, that's the thing of saying, well, what what value do I bring you know, what is my brand that goes beyond, you know, specific knowledge of project management methodologies and, and tools and techniques of, you know, what have I, and what have I done? What have I accomplished? And how can I articulate that to an organization? 
that's a super important thing for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and uh, Dave, I I think um, I there there is also one belief that I have, and I will. I'm not gonna say. You know, th this is my my take. And uh, uh, when I went through uh, call programs uh, at that time, I had op opportunities of um, having six co-op settings. And um, uh, I think if you know the specific industry or the company, even the company you want to work for uh, once you graduate, then definitely try to stick with it. I, I have some friends who actually, you know, just kept going with, uh, you know, like one specific company and uh, was able to have that relationship that even before graduation, uh, he got just got the offer, right? Um, so that was great. For me, I actually, I, I was uncertain about where I want to go. So I, again, I forced myself to get outside of my comfort zone. I uh, try all kinds of different organizations. I, I work for a um, software development company. I work for Suncor, the energy company, uh, CPC, the broadcasting company, um, uh, the uh, uh, UPS, the delivery company. Basically, I, um, you know, the, the nature of my job was pretty similar. It was QA because of the, the work I was, the study I was uh, focusing on, but I was able to explore different culture, different type of business. And with that, I kind of get a sense of where I want to go. And, and uh, I think, um, you know, and I, I will say that when you are young, you don't have a lot of responsibilities in terms of you know, kids or family and stuff like that, try to be uh, a little bit courageous. And that's where you can also, people are going to accept you uh, to make mistakes and, and fail. You don't want to have those failures later in your life. It will be more um, devastating at that time. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, I, I, I think, like you say, when you're young and maybe early in your career and have less you know, perhaps responsibilities and so on. It, it is easier to make jumps like that. And so I agree if you can, you can, you know, have the courage because it is, it is scary to move from a known organization where you know the people, you know the, you know where everything is and what everything does to a new organization that's scary. So, you know, all things being equal, that it's a good idea. Having said that though, I've also seen some folks that have, risen up through the ranks of an organization and do quite well. Yes. Um, so I, you know, I'd, I'd almost say both models are, um, you can be successful, especially yes. in big organizations, like in the banks or, you know, they, they are, they are gigantic organizations that you can go all over the place and they right. offer fantastic training and, and mentoring. I guess where I'd qualify it is to say, if the reason why you're staying is because you are afraid to go somewhere else, that's the wrong reason. Like, right. you know, if you're staying yeah. because there is this vast opportunity and that you think that it's a better opportunity to stay than to go, then fine. I, I've seen a lot of successful people that have fared Definitely. quite well in their careers without yeah. the diversity. But, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like you, you, you are, you are, you know, if you stay in a, a single organization, unless it is a big, you know, conglomerate that has multiple businesses, most organizations are sort of in a single industry. You're, you're limiting your view to, you know, like tech or manufacturing or finance or whatever. So there, there is a somewhat of a limiting factor there, but that's the kind of thing where you just kind of, you know, figure out what's right for you. You know, there, there are the, there are the, the company people, the ones that, that stay for 20 or 25 years. And then there are the people that they, they, they like to move every three years, you know, or, or whatever. And both models are, are quite doable for sure. Yes. Yeah. And I, I would say, um, I totally agree with you. I, I think the other thing is uh, how we define success, right? Because I, I think um, there, there's a, there's a expectation that you know, uh, success means that you got the highest position possible. You got the, the maximum salary possible. I, I will say maybe I'm a, um, a little bit uh, different. Like I, I think that you define your own success and you don't let other people to tell you whether you're successful or not, because maybe to one person just being 
you know, having a nine to five job that you can enjoy your life or you can, you know, spend a lot of time doing volunteer work or help our community to you, that is success, right? And I think at the end of the day, you do what you feel the most rewarding that you don't regret because um, we're all eventually going to, you know, uh, disappear from this world. So our, our time is our best, uh, most important resources and you want to use that for the maximal satisfaction for yourself. So, um, I, I yeah, so I, I, I think, um, Define what is successful to you and come up with your plan and uh, stay committed to your plan. I, I think that that is the, the ingredient. I know I, I couldn't agree more. There, there's, you know, and, and a lot of times we have external ideas of what success is that we've read about or, or we're told by society what it is. Like you say, to go as high in the organization or as to uh, have as much responsibility or to, or whatever. And that's fine if you want to do that. Like it's all power to you. But a lot of times we just follow the 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 direction that's that we think is what's right. You know, I can identify with that a little bit in my career. I think there were some times when I kind of got into, you know, a certain type of senior role that I just wasn't comfortable doing. Like it just, you know, that you know, I, I advanced through and was able to do the role. But I remember at the time thinking, geez, I kind of liked what I used to do. I don't like being here. And, it's, and, and not in the, the way you described it before, of just I was out of my comfort zone and I just was, didn't want to learn. It's like I knew what it was and gave it enough time and didn't want to be there. So that, And that's, that's the time when course corrections can come into play. So don't be afraid of a lateral move at that point, if you, yeah. you know, or even a downward move, if it, downward in terms of the hierarchy or whatever of, of if you find yourself in a say a senior senior management role and you don't like do having to do the things that senior managers need you know do you know it's a it's a very different world then that's the time to make a change for sure yeah i no. I, I think um that kind of lead to um in terms of career path um so there is there is like when you start in the project management, you kind of grew into like you, you always start with it most of the time as a in, in the delivery role. And um, at one point, there's also almost like a two tension that you can two branches. Um, one is um, continue focusing on delivery and you eventually become senior project manager, project director, program director, like and, and uh, um, you know, those those positions. Um, get paid really well like you know because they are talking we're talking about like large large initiatives right and um but there's also another branch that i end up with because of family situation i i realized that uh it was in my uh late 30s that i start realizing that i i cannot keep doing late night delivery like as a project manager you have to stand like especially in the it world you do uh, midnight, like uh, over the weekend implementation. And I just feel like, you know, when I was early 30, I, I don't feel anything. Like I can stay up late a uh, couple of days and I don't feel, uh, you know, tired at all. But as you get older, like I, I think, I, I feel like there are things that I, I have to change. And that's where I decide to um, take less um, salary. Um, However, having more stability in terms of uh, work-life balance, right? And uh, um, yeah, and it's different challenges as well. In, in the PM, PMO setting, you're focusing on process, on managing project managers, um, in, empowering people, like helping them to grow and be successful. Um, that is more people management, right? So I, I enjoy doing that. Um, and uh, so I, I think that's where I have been doing in the last five years or so. Right. Yeah, that's, that's an inter interesting point. There, there's that, and I agree. There is the, you know, if you stay on the delivery, you know, uh, direction, you know, in various titles of increasing, you know, from pro uh, project manager, program manager, senior, you know, yeah. uh, program manager, and 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 so on, project director, that whole role. Uh, like you say, it's 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 fast paced, you know, high paid, high pressure you know, uh, et cetera, you know, and that is a, a, a role to go. There is the whole project management office, more, 
you know, looking at the process, the organization and so on, which is a little more definable. Uh, and it really depends on which, which area you, you, you want to go in. You know, some people love the, you know, almost the, um, you know, in terms of the delivery side, there is more excitement or there, there's more uh, adrenaline filled days. Like there, you know, you're, you're, but like you say, there's late nights and weekends and, and, and there are, you know, um, messages coming to you in the middle of the night as to why things are going wrong. You have to be prepared for that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, less on the other side, less on the standards PMO methodology side, for example. Um, but so, so it's a bit of a trend, but that, that is a way to, to, to shape your career. It's a, like, you know, it's, it's a big field. It's a big discipline with lots of different types of roles. Yeah. And, and you can see with a, a PMI right now, Project Management Institute, they start having, um, a variety of uh, different certification. I, I don't know if they still have the project scheduler, like they used to have that, like you have one certification just for people who do uh, pure scheduling, right? And uh, you have people like, so there's a lot of different roles within the PMO or project management domain that once you get into it, you can start define which niche you want to focus on, or you want to be more general and uh, focus on delivery or setting up the PMO. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do there. What are you? A, are you a certifications guy? Would you Would you recommend getting certifications? If which ones? If you had time for a couple, what would you say to What would you say to somebody to get within five years? If If you well, were so, they, they, I have to say something that I recognized very early in my career. I I remember. Uh, in, while, while I was in my co-op terms, what I would do is I once I get into those company, I will look at you know the director and VP and you know the chiefs level, look at read their background, right? And I see that a lot of them um, either don't have um, certification or not many credentials, or you know some are just um, with very basic um, degree. Um, I'll, I'll, often when they're at a certain level, they will get MBA, but um, it's not always uh, the case, right? So that triggered me thinking about for those people who are having such a responsibility and, and uh, they need to make key decisions for you know, organization. However, they don't, from the specific uh, knowledge perspective, they might not be the most knowledgeable and I, I, I start questioning myself, like what is that's the case, right? And I think that's where I, I slowly uh, discover that you need to have the minimum knowledge to get the work done. However, uh, it doesn't in the real life, it's not always the more knowledge you have, the higher position you will be because um, the higher position means that you need to be able to uh, move people. You need to be able to motivate people, to lead people. And 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 a leader. Uh, I I I always I always use example like a coach, right? Basketball coach. Um, um, you don't need to be the best player to be a great coach. Often you see that those professional sports, the best coaches, they were not um, awesome players when they were playing. But it just happened that once they retire and they start like coaching, they become great. And and I think that's where, um, you know, going back to what I was talking about, like defining what you want to do and focusing on what are the skills and development you need to get there, uh, is important. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. For certification, I, I would say, uh, if you want to be in the project management, um, PMP uh, is a good foundation. Uh, having the agile uh, knowledge um, is also important. Um, there is yeah. not a company that has uh, one extreme case, like often you have hybrid that organization is requiring you to understand both worlds. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. You make such an interesting point about the look at the look at the sort of the the resumes or the you know the, the certifications education of your leadership and organization that that is such an interesting idea and you know on a number of a number of levels one is it 
it, it, it suggests to you what the organization values, you know, but of, of what is, you know, not that you have to just mirror or emulate exactly what your, your, your management structure is, um, um, is doing, but there's, there's, there's value in being in sync, you know, not being out of sync with, with, with the culture of your organization. The other thing is just an interesting idea that I've just sort of, you know, that I've, that I've thought of in the past and it reminds me that sometimes, um, and, and no doubt PMP and Scrum Master and so on are, are good for, you know, great on a resume, gets you into organizations. Absolutely. You know, I'm in the education business. I'm not gonna say otherwise. But what I have also noticed is that some of the best and most successful project managers are often too busy implementing great projects to get the fifth and sixth and seventh certification. Like they're, they're, they're already doing it. They, they, so it, it just sort of, a, you know, I put those two together and I just sort of say, you know, think about, th think about what's works for you. Think about what do you need to get in to get your mark, to make your brand, be consistent with the organization. For example, if, if every manager in the organization has their you know, scrum master or their you know, a black belt uh, you know, in, in quality, then get a black belt in quality. Like, that's not a bad idea. But if, but if you're the only one, you know, your, your senior VP might be thinking, well, like, why, did, why does he have, like, we, you know, that's nice, but we don't, you know, there, there might be sort of an odd fit there. So, you know, and that's, that's sort of the, you know, again, the, you, you mentioned about the grayness, like we, we were talking about the non-black and white of project management. There's, there's all kinds of non-black and white or grayness when it comes into, you know, what do you need within an organization? How much formal knowledge do you need, you know, uh, in terms of letters behind your name in order to be successful? Like that's a, that there's, there's no one clear answer to that. Yeah, and and uh, often I, I will say um, ha having having the the experience um, will outweigh the number of certification you have. Obviously, you, you need to have the the minimum for yourself to remain competitive, right? Because it, it shows that you have the the basic uh, knowledge. Um, however, it doesn't mean that the more you have, the better chance you are going to get. Um, I, I, one thing that I encourage students to do is um, when you are early in your career, um, any organization you go to, quickly find the person that you respect that, uh, it could be a senior person within your team that you find that person is, you know, either very friendly, um, it, it shows a, a good charisma, um, someone who you is approachable that you can learn from. And I, I will say, um, try to, um, the, the more you can um, avoid making mistakes yourself by hearing other people's story, the better you are. And also knowing that there's someone who um, is able to give you guidance, consultation, someone who you can trust, I think that's very important. And that's why we, we call mentor. But I, I think sometimes you don't even need to make it so official, right? You can, yeah. you know, and uh, often you get like people who are nice enough, who are willing to help out the the, uh, the young young guys coming out uh, of the rank and just to help the next ge generation. Yeah, no, I agree. I, mentoring is so, so important. And the best mentoring, I agree, the best mentoring happens without ever saying the word mentor or, you know, it, it just organically happens. You sort of strike up a conversation with the more experienced person and they sort of start to take you under their wing and, and it just happens. It's nothing that's prearranged or it's not a, Hey, will you mentor me? It's, it's, not, <laughs> that, it's not that overt, you know, cause it, it, there needs to be a comfort level for, for yeah. it to, to, to really work well. So, but it is, it is true. If you can seek that out and, and be open to it. And usually I know from being on the experience side of the equation on that, people are much more willing to mentor if they see someone who is enthusiastic and is willing to take challenges. And if the person who will go over and above on the project, who doesn't complain about, ah, you know what, it's four, four, three, <laughs> go home they're the ones that'll say you know hey what do you need they'll get mentored 
automatically, you know, right. like, they'll question. So you, you, you get what, you know, you, you, it's give and take you, you know, the more you give, the more you, you get in, in organizations, just, you know, in life, in life in general. So, but yeah. uh, anyways, Harrison, this has been a terrific conversation. I, I thank you for your time and your experience on this. There's uh, all kinds of some, some ideas I, I hadn't even really thought of before. So I, well, thank you very much for, for, uh, for chatting with me today. Thank you, Dave, for having me. Thanks for listening to my discussion with Harrison Chen. During our discussion, Harrison described a number of strategies for entering and thriving in the project management field. I think it also was evident that there are different approaches that make sense depending on the skills and interest of each person. The project management field is large and diverse, and people entering the field are often able to carve their own unique path. If you like this series of discussions, please consider following Understanding Projects on your favorite podcast player or clicking subscribe on YouTube.